Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's Green Shopping Centre here in Dublin. I'm here to pick up this 211 registration Tesla Model 3 and I'm going to give it a little bit of a test drive and yeah, I'm going to hire this car, see what it's like. There's been an awful lot of talk about these cars so I've never driven one before so I'm going to take one out and see what they're like. Yeah, and I have a bit of sad news about my Honda E. Yeah. It's gone. <laughs> so, is this going to replace it? Am I saying goodbye to electric cars? Can this change my mind? I don't know. I decided to hire one to find out. Bit noisy here. They're doing power washing next door there. So yeah, UFO drive here in St. Stephen's Green Shopping Centre. Tesla Model 3. Let's take it for a drive. See what it's like. Okay, so I'm just going to unplug it here. It's still locked. Anyway, we'll hop inside and yeah, a nice flush door handle here. Now it says on the screen that we have, I think it's 415 kilometers of range. Yeah, there you go. 415 kilometers of range. Nice big screen here. We have all the wood trim. Nice soft touch plastics up here as well on the dashboard and also down here. There is no USBs. There's two USB-Cs back here for the backseat passengers. This is rattling, so not good, new car, <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty nicely finished. Other than that, now we have two, I, I'm guessing these are charging pads, yeah, because there's no USBs here for the front passengers, so yeah, I don't have wireless charging on my phone, but yeah, they're a pretty nice car. Um, I don't really know the idea of this sort of a magnet thing um, I don't know why that's like that but yeah uh, yeah so pretty nice car we're gonna see what it's like and we're going to go down to Port Leash which is about 85 kilometers away and we're going to see what sort of range we have left from our 415 kilometers so we'll see what it's like on the road this is the standard Tesla model 3 so yeah don't really like the steering wheel it looks very cheap like something you'd see on a Dacia Sandero or something yeah not not a nice steering wheel at all but yeah I do like the um, the handles here it's a kind of a electronic opening it kind of pops open there when you press the handle kind of gives it a little bit of an opening there just on the button so I like that and then you can just manually open it here with a handle so that's quite nice and then you get this warning screen then look uh, may cause damage to window trim if you manually open it what sort of nonsense is that but uh, yeah and then <laughs> if you want to open the glove box you have to press this button here to open the glove box what is the idea of that um, I've no idea why that's there why isn't there a button on the uh, glove box itself but yeah it's pretty um I have an all leatherette finish here on the seats as well. Uh, the back seats, uh, they're okay. I sat in them earlier. There's about an inch and a half of headroom in the back. And we also have a pull down armrest there as well with cup holders on it. And yeah, we have a flat floor in the back as well. Um, leg room is only just okay behind my driving position. Not that great. So yeah, we're gonna, I do like the sunroof. Yeah, it's like a panoramic goes the whole way across. So yeah, I'm gonna hit the road. Let's see what it's like. Just as well, I watched the um, the little video that shows you how to disconnect it. There was a small little button on top of the charging cable. You gotta press it and then wait for the blue light and then it is unlocked. So yeah, I think uh, we'll see. Okay, let's put it into D. Um, there is no handbrake release button, so I'd imagine you just drive off. <laughs> this is the app, by the way. So, yeah, you just put that on your phone and you can lock and unlock the car. Um, I have buzzing noises here. I have my indicators coming on. I don't know what is the story. What? Why is it buzzing? <laughs> I don't have the hazard lights on. Why is it buzzing? I have no idea. I'm gonna just drive forward a bit. 
Is that going to shut up? Is it going to shut up? Have I got a door open? Maybe, maybe, maybe the bonnet is still open, is it? I have no idea. <laughs> Put it into P. I'm going to try the bonnet. There's a buzzing noise happening. The indicators are flashing. Now the mirrors are going in and out. <laughs> I've no clue. <laughs> What's wrong with this car? Huh? Um, oh, hang on. Have we got a uh, regenerative braking temporarily reduced? Regen will increase as vehicle is driven. Is there anything else I need to know? I don't often drive American cars. What is going on? I have an unlock. Is this going to shut up? Please shut up. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> no, it's still going. <laughs> What's going on with this thing? Is it going to shut up? Please. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> okay, finally it has shut itself up. But St. Stephen's Green Shopping Centre is looking well. I was in there earlier on just getting a few presents for my nephew and nieces. So, yeah, it's looking good inside. Um, if a bit dated looking, but still, nice shopping centre. Oh, look at this, look. It's even, look. You see that? It's, it, it, it's detecting the pedestrian, you see that? Look, even the guy on the bicycle, look. See the guy on the bicycle? It's detecting them as well. Yeah, pretty cool. So what I really want to touch on in this video is just the charging network and the headaches that I had using it with the Honda E. So the Honda E had a very short range. I mean, it never reached the WLTP figure at all. 220 kilometers uh, from its 35.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. It never did reach anywhere close to that figure. Turn left onto Patrick Street, Sra in Fodrick. Yeah, so 120 odd miles claimed range, but I really only ever got about 85 miles. So yeah, it was about 35 miles off what it had claimed it had. And yeah, I wasn't too happy with that. But the car itself really did like the car, had no problem with the car. Okay, small boot, small rear space. But other than that, I loved all the tech. Uh, I loved all the preheating and yeah, heated steering wheel and seats and all of that. Really did like that, but the charging network let it down and you would have seen in videos that I shot uh, especially the one where I did 1,000 miles in the Honda E it took me 29 hours and 24 minutes um, yeah you will see the problems that I had with the ESB network now the Tesla network there's not enough of them in Ireland yeah I've driven enough around to know that there's just not enough of these charge stations um, getting fitted in Ireland Oh, I have to leave the uh, the horse go by. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there's plenty of pickup in this car. Look at this. Ooh, that is nice. Nice pickup. You will encounter this if you're buying an electric car. As great as they are, you will have such a headache at the charge stations. All this hanging around. And then the next thing uh, you know, you're gonna pull into a charge station, your wife, girlfriend, or partner is gonna be beside you, and you're going to um, encounter people ahead of you at the chargers, and she's going to turn around to you and say, uh, how long are we gonna be here? And then you're going to say, um, well, uh, what you want to say is probably an hour, but then you say, oh, probably 45 minutes. <laughs> no, it's not. It's going to be over an hour by the time they're finished and by the time I'm charged in it's going to be so long yeah so what you're also going to encounter is when you're driving into a charge station now turn right onto Garner Road <laughs> you're, you're going to have that real uh, awful feeling in your stomach where you're just how many people are ahead of me is there anyone at the chargers is there is there a problem with the charger yes you will face all of these things when you buy your electric car but would I would I buy one would I buy one of these well I wouldn't of course because it's full electric I'm gone 
I am gone from full electric so this is where some of you have already turned off the video because uh, I'm gone back to combustion albeit it is a hybrid car it's not a plug-in hybrid uh, maybe in the future I'll get a plug-in hybrid but um, no I'm gone back to combustion no plugging in no charging no nothing okay we're nearly up to motorway speed limit here now around 120 kilometers and the suspension <sighs> Not the best on this car, I've said it already, it's not very comfortable. And there's a lot of road noise. Yeah, it's... If you were thinking of buying one of these cars, you definitely need to test drive one. Uh, maybe hire one at UFO. And yeah, just that suspension, I couldn't... I couldn't buy this car with this suspension. And even over bumps during the city the drive there, it's just boom, boom, you know, hard. Um, no, the suspension on this car would definitely let it down big time, in my opinion. Uh, the steering is good, feels direct. Um, yeah, the seat is comfortable, driving position is good. I've got decent knee room here as well, that's okay. I'm six foot two, I've got plenty of headroom, so and a noisy armrest okay but yeah we are yeah we haven't got too far to go now we we'll pull in and then talk about more charging okay we're just pulling into the supermax plaza here in port leash now we could have pulled into junction 14 where they have four oh, fast chargers but i decided not to do that so um i can see here there are two electric cars charging ahead of me so this is what you're going to encounter. This is what I was talking about. You come in and there's people ahead of you. Now I have no idea how long they're there. I could I, I could go onto the ESP app and it would give me an idea, but... Um, oh, hang on a minute now. Look at this. There's two people charging at the one charger. Now, I'm curious to see how they're able to do that because I tried that before and it wouldn't work for me. And sometimes it doesn't work where you're charging two cars at the same time. So I'm just going to ask those people, um, are they actually getting charged in both those cars at the same time? Because this is an issue with these chargers as well, where um, even though they have two cables, CCS and Type 2, you can't charge two cars at the same time. But one of them is a Nissan Leaf, so it could be charging on Chatamo. There could be... A Chatamo cable, maybe. Um, I really like the reversing camera. That's very good in this car. Okay, we have this man pulling out in his Nissan Leaf and the Hyundai Kona. So these two cars were able to charge at the same time. And the only reason for that is that he was charging in Chatamo and he was charging in CCS. If he had chosen Type 2, he wouldn't have been able to charge because there's something wrong with these chargers the way you can charge on type 2 and ccs at the same time so yeah just another problem you will encounter when you buy an electric car and by the way the nissan leaf pulled in here as well and he couldn't use the chatamo because there seems to be some issue with it so i'm not sure what the issue is but he could not charge and yeah so we have ccs uh chatamo and type 2 so yeah, I'm gonna charge this up. Now, it doesn't give a percentage what's left in the battery pack. It just shows you the amount of kilometers you've left to drive. So in this case, we've 288. Now we arrived here at 289 kilometers and 85 kilometers to get down here. We left at 415 kilometers. That means it took 126 kilometers of range from the battery pack to drive 85 kilometers. So that is a 41 kilometer discrepancy. Somebody's after leaving their their child seat here as well. If you want the free child seat, there's one in, in Port Leash. Okay, we need to open up the charge port, so I need to press on that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, I just want. I'm just curious to see how quick it charges. So, um, let's just get our card here and swipe it. Look. That's uh, a, that's only available. Look. So this is what I'm talking about. First hand. Another problem with the charger. Like, what is going on with the ESB and these chargers? So the guy in the Nissan Leaf told me there was a problem with this, but I thought he was trying to use one of the other cables, but now it seems that only AC 
is available. So let me cancel that again and just click it again. This is absolutely ridiculous. Here, let's move over there and see can we charge this bloody thing. Okay, so let's swipe here and we want CCS. Okay, now there should be no issues at all with this one because the, the man in the corner was able to charge no problem. And you see these electric cars as well. Apparently you have to keep this pressed in until there is a proper connection. Okay, so, okay, swipe the card. Okay, checking card. Come on, come on. Is it gonna work? Give us a green light, give us a green light. Is it working? Keep it pushed in. Yeah. Come on. Oh, 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 is it gonna go green? Come on. It's flashing. It's flashing, but is it charging? There we oh, go. we have contact. Hallelujah. And lights are still flashing. <laughs> For what? I don't know. Why are the lights flashing? <laughs> okay, we're 69%. Okay, about five minutes later, and the display is showing that we have 35 minutes to charge, to fully charge. So we found out why the child seat is left here. A child got sick in it. So they just dumped it here. What the hell? By the way, I'm not responsible for any of the curbing here. Yeah, all four wheels are curbed, as I said, and I have photos taken and I put them on the app. So if you're hiring one of these cars, look for damage, put it on the app, report it, just in case you're charged for it. Okay, charging stopped. We are at 416 kilometers. So that took roughly half an hour, just over half an hour to go from 69% up to 100%. As I said already, the charging, that's the headache. Okay, so the Tesla seems to be charging an awful lot quicker than the Honda E, but then it is an awful lot more expensive than the Honda E. Now let me just tell you a quick story with me and the Honda E and which was almost the final nail in the coffin for me with electric cars. So I pulled into Athlone. There's two fast chargers in Athlone and one was occupied, one was free. I pulled into the free one and tried charging. Nothing was happening. Unplugged, swiped the card again. Nothing was happening. So here we go, another problem. So I rang up the helpline and they said, oh yes, that charger needs a reboot. I can do a remote reboot. It'll take about five minutes. And I'm there, great. Hang on the five minutes and voila, the charger starts to work again. You know, so uh, this was 12 midday on a Saturday that this happened. And I asked her at the other end of the helpline, when did the last person charge on that charger that was given the problems? And she says, oh yes, it was Thursday. And that was it. Bye bye electric car. So from Thursday to Saturday, nobody thought to ring in and tell the ESB there was a problem with the charger. And even worse, the ESB didn't detect that there was a problem with the charger and do a remote reboot. And the problem with this one, is somebody gonna ring in and tell them about this one? Probably not. So when somebody comes in to charge in CCS, it's not gonna work. They're stuck with AC 43. So yeah, that is it, Kenneth. But let me just tell you one thing. If you are getting an electric car in 2022, best of luck and enjoy the headaches. Please don't buy a Tesla. <laughs> it's it's, they're okay, but yeah, the charging will wreck your head. We're out of here, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll chat to you again very soon for another video. Cheers. Take care. Cheers. Kenneth, open up the glove box there. Open up what glove box? No, the glove box, open it up there. Where is it? Yeah. Glove box. Glove box. No, there's a glove box on the far side. Open it up there. It must be here, is it? Uh, today. There. <laughs> that is the biggest load of book. <laughs>